Boys, let's go straight into the predictions. We're trying our hand at this. I'm sure there's a lot of wrong decisions here, especially with you because I've seen yours. <laughs> but <laughs> let's start off by going with our top six predict predictions. Cameron, can you give us your predictions? You bet, Fred. Sixth place, I've gone Tottenham Hotspur. Fifth place, I've gone for Chelsea. Fourth place, I have gone for Manchester United. Third, I've gone for Arsenal. Uh, second, Liverpool. And first, Man City. Ooh, I like Arsenal. HFC, what are you uh, going for? In, in sixth place, I've got Chelsea. Fifth place, Spurs. Fourth place, United. Third place, Liverpool. Second place, City. And first place, unfortunately, is the Gooners. Wow. Wow. That's what lovely. great predictions those are. What great it's predictions. Angie J, what are you going for? So I've got Liverpool at sixth. I've got Newcastle at fifth. I've got Chelsea at fourth. I've got Manchester United at third. I've, then I've got Arsenal at second. Ooh. City again to do it. Wrong first place. decision. Fine. MBK. For me, I've actually got Aston Villa at sixth. I've got Liverpool at fifth. Dodgy. I've also got Newcastle at fourth. Chelsea, third. Man United, second. And Man City, first. Did anyone notice what was missing there? Did anyone notice what was missing in the top six? There? Massive, right, massive team I will, missing. I will but... say, man, I have gone Aston Villa, sixth, Newcastle, fifth, Man United, fourth, Liverpool, third, City, second, and number one, along with my guarantee on the first episode, Arsenal win the title. You're mad. Right? Absolutely mental. Lock him up. Fair enough. So let's let's get on to that. Because MBK, you are as, <laughs> I, I am actually going to look up a silence to you. You have left us out <laughs> of your top six. That is incredibly nuts. But let's talk City and Arsenal. So HFC and me have yeah. both gone Arsenal to win the title. HFC, why why do you think that? I think that it's hard. We've seen when and heard it's hard to keep momentum. City have done three in a row now, with the third of them being a treble. I worry that it's going to be quite easy to fall into a state of complacency whilst the Gooners have now got two nervy title run-ins out of their systems, out of the way. And with that, they could be raring to go for, for another one. And I think this might be their time. I, I agree. I think the depth that Arsenal have added gives us that added boost Definitely. to try and push again City for the title. So I, I have watched the pre-season of Arsenal. I know it's not much to go off, right? the preseason, they don't have the adrenaline rush, they don't have the fans, real fans going at it. But for me, I think adding in Havertz, Rice, Tim, Timber looks really good in the preseason. He, he genuinely really does look good. And he's been playing at left back a lot because Zinchenko's injured. So that's adding depth that we didn't have at left back, a ball playing, because Tierney can't play with the ball really. So that adds something in to our, to our defence. And then Havertz and Rice, should be good players, right? And should yeah, improve yeah, our team. Definitely. But it hasn't looked like it's working very well in pre-season. I will add that in. But I still have to go with Arsenal to win it. Cam, Angie, you've both gone City. What's the reason for that? Personally, I just think that City were so much above and beyond any other team in the league last year. And I know they've lost a couple of crucial players. But I have also think they've strengthened and they've replaced them quite well. And I just think when push comes to shove, I just think they get it done. And I think they've just, they are getting better and better. They just want to treble when, and I think they're going to be, be the first team to ever win four Do you not own. think though, Cam, yeah. that them losing the likes of Gundogan, Big loss. Mares, huge, potentially Carl Walker. I mean, I, I don't actually know where that Whispers. transfer rumor is with Whispers. Bayern anymore. I don't know where yeah. that's gone, but do you not think that that's going to have a negative impact on City this year? Of course, of course. But I think I think one of the beautiful things about the City side is is that players sort of transition in and out of it very quickly, very easily. When you looked at it sort of four or five years ago, you'd say, "How could City do it without Aguero and David Silva?" And now you kind of forget them. You kind of forget them when you think about City these days, which is saying something in itself. So I think they've got one of the best managers of all time up top leading them. I think he knows what his team needs. I think they've just bought, they're going to get Gavardi Olin, who's like 20 years old and is going to like absolutely dominate for years to come. So as, they, as they've got one going out the door in Carl Walker, they've got another sort of mad defensive player coming in. Yeah. Um, and I just don't see at this point in time, maybe next year, I think a lot of teams will maybe step up to that level. And I think man, maybe Man City, five on the bounce is a bit too tough. But I just think this season, I just they are 
It's an easy pick. It's a bit of a cop out, isn't it, Angie? It is. It's it a is a cop out. Angie, what have you got to add to that? No, I think obviously you brought up David Silva. I think when he when he left, everyone said he's irreplaceable. Maguire left, everyone said irreplaceable, and they got they got Holland in. He scored thirty six goals last season. I think these this the city side just seems to be able to continually march on yeah. and just not only succeed but obliterate. I mean, winning the treble last season. I mean, I put my hands up. I didn't see them like actually getting that far in the Champions League. I thought potential bottle merchants. I didn't think they had the, the stomach or desire to go all the way. And boy, they proved me. And I think a lot of others, maybe people sat here right now, wrong. Yeah. And I just see them continually getting better and better and winning again. It's, it's, a, it's a brave decision from me and HFC to go against treble winners. But <laughs> yes, I, I, yeah. I do think they might have a bit of a hangover from that. One person I'd like to chat to most <laughs> is what is going through your head. How have Arsenal not ended up in your top six? Did you forget that we existed? In, in all honesty, like, I put my hand on my heart. I just didn't know where to put them. Like, the reason why you didn't win the league last season was because we say you bottled, but I just say you didn't have a bagsman, and that's the problem. The fact that you haven't brought in a bagsman, it just leads me to question... Where exactly are you going to be next season? I know, obviously, you've got Saka. Yes, you do have Saka. Yes, you have Martinelli. But there's only so many goals they can score. Unless maybe Jesus. I mean, he's injured for the start of the season. Yeah. But unless Jesus suddenly turns into someone who's going to score you, what, 20 goals? Yeah. Then I but, don't really know where you're going to be. But how does that justify not being in the top six? <laughs> what, what? I mean, because Saka and Martinelli get a lot of goals. And also, I, and, Odegaard. and also assists as well, on top of that. Yeah. It's like 14, 14, 14 assists, 12 goals for Saka. Yeah. It's over 20 and goals. And Martinelli's goals. also double. Oh, I think you share the love in that team. Look, like you say, yeah. that's the way you play. Yeah. Look, I understand that, but I, I just didn't know where to put you. I, I'm In all honesty, I just didn't know where <laughs> to put you. Down completely. So I just took you out. <laughs> like, I didn't know where to put you. So I just took you out. It was just like void. But okay, look. Truth is, those teams I put in the top six, I see them being there, but obviously one person's going to drop out and Arsenal are going to be there. <laughs> Let's be real. To come, but I just didn't know where to put you. To That's come to, you, to, come to your defence, MBK, you look at Liverpool the season before last, the one just gone, they were two games away from winning a quadruple, didn't even get Champions League last year. So it, it, all it takes is a bad start to the season, a bad run of form, confidence gets knocked, maybe a couple of crucial injuries. And you can very quickly find yourself outside the top six. Exactly. It's a super competitive league. Teams, teams aren't it, that far apart. It really from is, but I, I, I don't think Arsenal will be outside the top six this season. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a big claim. It's a big claim. Let's, let's go on to Manchester United, who everyone on this panel put in the top four. So, unlike MBK, we didn't make irrational decisions. <laughs> <laughs> fueled with hatred <laughs> we, we all put them in the top four it's not my fault um, I hate Arsenal man it's GC so let's four. talk man you I think you'll have, a, you'll have a decent season I've put you four I, I think you'll have a good season I think you'll have a great season you've put yourselves second do you think you're going to do that great this year? we came what third last season yeah, yeah. and we with a bad Liverpool and Chelsea yeah. pardon? With a bad Liverpool and Chelsea. Yeah, with yeah, agreed, agreed to a certain extent. But Strong, we came. A bit bad, it's a bit harsh. <laughs> Strong, <laughs> we we came third last season and we were in and out. We we started off awful. Look, we lost what four 0 to who was it? Brentford, Brentford Brighton, Brentford, all yeah. those people. Seven 0 to Liverpool as well. Exactly, exactly, and we still came third. We brought in. We're about to bring in Highland. That's our striker. Where we brought in Mason Mount. And I just think, and we've brought in Onana, someone who can play with his feet. As much yeah. as I love David De Gea, he can't play with his feet. True. Onana can. But bringing in those players, we've added to our team, and I just think we will try and push City for it. In all honesty, I just had to pay homage to City, and I put them first. But I do think they'll struggle this season. I think they'll, they'll struggle a little bit. Yeah, I think we've all agreed on Man U to be in the top four. Yeah. What I would just say on that is, though, is I do fear for Man United in the sense that I just don't quite see the progression that I would have liked. I do feel like maybe they are potentially sort of stagnating a little bit. Like, I look at, they've taken Mason Mount off Chelsea. He doesn't He doesn't make me feel that excited. Hoyland the same. I just feel like potentially other teams are may, maybe doing more, is what I'm saying. And if you stand still in the Premier League, you're technically moving backwards. That would be my one concern, but they are in my top four. It's great for Okay, so... We're, we're, we're all agreeing on sure. Man <laughs> I think just one thing, thank you. Say, it's Rashford. I'm sorry, he's just unbelievable. Yeah. He's, just got, he's got desire. He said he wants to become, he came out and said he wanted to beat Rooney's record. And I think he has a lot of hunger and desire to prove something first to himself. This is a guy who just lives off pressure. He puts on himself. I think he'll bag 20 goals this not, season. Not a great 
preseason though, right? For Rashford, has he even scored? He no, he's not had a great preseason, but he came in a bit later and so I, he scored I, that money, just... and now he's gonna. <laughs> no, he's gonna go down. No, I did okay. say that. I remember saying that to you on the chat, the fantasy chat at the time when Rashford was signing it, being like, honestly, he's... the amount of times I've seen that with Arsenal players where they get that big contract and then they just go downhill. They... No, I agree. But the thing is, for me, like. Rashford, we all know Rashford is the kind of player who's going to have his run of form. He's going to do, he's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to have a stint where Rashford goes unbelievable, like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we have other players to counter the parts where he doesn't. So oh, yeah, wow. Man United top four, everyone. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> let's go. Okay, let's go. Liverpool, HFC's team. So me and HFC have both put Liverpool in the top four. Yeah. Cam has also put them in the top four. Sensible guy. MBK and Angus haven't you've left Liverpool out I think that Liverpool are going to have a bit of resurgence this year I, I think know. you've got to under well. clock I think you're having you had kind of a a Jürgen flop year yeah <laughs> the last year the first, the first <laughs> one that could potentially get put down as that maybe I, I think that's uh, what, what I'm looking forward to next season is we've got a few new players who are now maybe a bit more settled even switching up a couple kit numbers is just to let just to let them know that they're now seriously part <laughs> of the, the part of the down. project. Well, yeah. if you give Darwin the number nine shirt, I look forward to him now uh, taking that role on, scoring goals like a number nine does. Uh, and I'm confident Darwin's got something to say this season. I I agree. I I do think Darwin Nunes is going to be good for you this season. My problem with you is. Not you specifically. I was going to say me personally. My problem with um, <laughs> Liverpool as a team, you you haven't brought in a DM. Well, we still got half of the month to go I'm upset to see United looking at Amrabat because we've had a couple of nice rumours with him and I like the look of him but as Klopp said we're signing at least one like two more players we've got McAllister got Soboslai we're bidding for Lavia right now and we're in talks with this Brazilian guy from Fluminense uh, called Andre 22 years old I'll I just think let Klopp do the talking I, Lavia will happen I think do you think so yeah Lavia, Lavia will happen yeah and that will help you a lot in this. I like you the need, sound of that. Yeah. He's only what nineteen before the season starts. Yeah, we no, exactly. Fields. We need what, when does the season starts? What next, next week? week? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. that much time. Like first Premier League game, you, and, and your first game is Chelsea. You yeah, don't have yeah, a DM we, against we've Chelsea. We've got work like, to do without that. That's 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 my only thing because I can't see. Apparently, McAllister was struggling in your last preseason game. You got me personally. I'm not looking too hard. Yeah. At pre-season, I've seen McAllister ball out in the World Cup. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. I've seen him do it where it matters. I'm not stressed about pre-season. I'm just gonna wait for him to come into the into the real thing, and then he'll I'll let him do the talking. Fair enough. All right, let's chat Spurs. Wow. Not many people are back in Spurs on this panel. All we've got is Harry fifth, Cam sixth for Spurs, and all the others. No other features. Have, have said no. Nah. Wow. Yeah. Spurs ain't making it. Which That's the way, harsh. isn't it? I think is. Valid. I think they're in a tough spot. Well, no, but I think Spurs are in a tough spot. If you're looking at the beginning of the season, it's it's tough to back Spurs to go and do top four there. Yeah. We'll talk about it later, but I, I potentially highly likely losing Harry Kane. Yeah. And that's that's that. Kane. He got them 30 goals last year. If Harry Kane was not playing for Spurs last year, where would they have come? Yeah, what's, he, what's he done that now? Four seasons in a row, he scored like 30 goals in a season? Well, yeah, something like last, that. Last he, season was his highest Premier League goal scoring season for Spurs. He scored 30 goals. In my opinion, that's a better achievement than Haaland scoring 36 for Yeah, City, I agree. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. It's, for, I mean, when it comes to Spurs and the, and the Kane thing, I, I do appreciate that. But the, I've, gone, I've gone actually for us to go one place higher than we did last year. And um, I feel like what you've really got to remind yourself is that Spurs have a decent set of players there, even without Harry Kane. When we kept, we hit, apparently we won the transfer window last year. We brought in players like Richardson and Basuma, who who we know can perform. We've seen them. Uh, won that transfer. Uh -huh. Well, people, there was, just, it was it was some of the talk. Honestly, this summer, last summer, we beat I, I we beat our Arsenal. Any of we that are, talk? We beat oh, Arsenal. We beat. We beat. Yeah, I, 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 I would, I'd, again, I'd have to say that I think Arsenal won that transfer window. That's not that. Is anyway, that's beyond the point. Anyway, we did not win that transfer window. But yeah, no, I, when it was in hindsight, but at the time, yeah. people were saying, you people know, Spurs were. had a really good fun. You know what? Yeah, I'll just I'll rephrase. That. Spurs had a very good transfer window. We have we brought in some good players, and I feel like what we, we really need is a manager who plays sort of nice, attacking football, build up the good feels around the club. And Spurs perform at the best when the, when people wipe them off. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's that crazy for Spurs Cameron, to come sixth next year. Cameron, let's just dial it back a bit, just just a tiny bit. I'm a bit confused as to what you just said. You said you brought in players last season. Mm. And even without Kane, you think you still have what it takes well, to go to go further? 
Yeah, Kane for sure. Kane you 30 goals for last sure. season. Yeah. Richarlison, who would probably take over as your main striker, got how many? Well, if we do sell Kane, we're probably looking to sell him. But also last season, there was alternative factors. There was alternate factors as to why we were un underperforming. Um, I won't go into them now, but you know, you're looking at <laughs> Conte's best friend. Conte's best friend died. Conte's best friend died. Our medical coach wow. died. Our fitness coach died. There, there was loads of other sort of factors that sort of went fed into us not in crucial moments of the season with crucial injuries to players like Ben Dinkor. I feel like a lot went wrong last year. And I feel like, look, I'm not saying we're going to win the league. I'm just saying we're going to come sixth. Fair enough. You know? <laughs> you're, saying, you're, saying, you're, saying, you're saying Vinny's going to you know come sixth. I apologise for that. Bit, sixth you know. is fair enough. Yeah. We'll, we'll okay. wait till the can season I, starts. Am I, am I in the right lane now here, man? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. All right, let's chat Chelsea. Chelsea because we've had some interesting differences here. So Cam has gone fifth, Angus has gone fourth to so Champo, MBK you've also gone third, so they're getting Champo, HFC sixth, me I've not put them in. I, I think Chelsea are not going to do anything this year. I think everyone's backing them to kind of have some kind of resurgence but does anyone remember how bad they were last year? I think Poch potentially can bring them back and show some of that youth talent that they've supposedly signed. But I still think it's going to take them a season to sort that all out. And I still think that they need to learn and adapt to the Premier League. And that team is just completely different and full of young players that really aren't ready for the Premier League or don't know the Premier League. Yeah, Maybe I mean, not aren't ready for the Premier League, but don't know the Premier League. I, 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 it is a, it's a fair point, but I remember an Argentine who, who joined Spurs to then become a manager of, of Tom Hotspur and then took the young players to the Champions League final in the space of what was it three years? Yeah. Like, and I think personally he's the right guy to take over Chelsea at this time. He's yeah, drumming to them a proper, proper core idea of what it is to be a Chelsea player. Because let's be honest, I, I think back over the last 10 years, genuinely, I think apart from City, Chelsea is probably the best team over the last 10 years in terms of accolades, in terms of the way they've played. And they are still a big draw. I mean, they've obviously bought they bought Jackson and, and that, that's, that's a great, great signing. And yeah, I think was it, well, I can't remember how many goals La Liga was, so it was 17, maybe 15 uh, around that area. I think they've got a real chance. I think they've got rid of their dead weight, which is Havertz. I think Mason Mount wasn't doing anything for them. And I agree with you, Fred, it was a bad season for them. Yeah. I think they've got rid of the players who did not suit them at all. And yeah. I think actually, weirdly, I think Mount is going to have the freedom at United. I know I'm going to go back to United, but I think it's a good move for all. Chelsea didn't want him. I think I think Chelsea don't want him. Yeah. United need him. I think they've now got the money. Unfortunately, they lost the boyhood uh, sweetheart in Mount, but I think it's given them the freedom of, of, of being in the top four. I think generally they've got a good chance. Fair enough. MBK, why uh, did you go third? Look, honestly, the people that Chelsea have brought in this season, you need to, I know we don't count pre-season, I know pre-season is, a lot of people play, play it as what, friendly games and all of that, but Nico Jackson, that guy's Drogba re looks reincarnation, good, yeah. like, really? he's, don't he looks that. so good, Nkuku scores a lot of goals, yeah. that guy scores a lot of goals and he's come in as well, and then you've got Mudrik who's got a point to prove. Yeah. Yes, and from what I've seen, he's, he's good, out man. for blood. He's so yeah, fast. he looks he, good. He, eh? He's so like, quick with the ball. It's it's actually scary. And you then, so then we talk about pace as well. Like pace is a, is a massive thing in the Premier League. Yeah, all of them have pace. Yeah, yeah. Literally yeah. all of them. Most important factor though, I'd say, in BK when it comes to Chelsea, isn't even the players themselves. Admittedly, the, the players you just mentioned there are superb and will definitely help. But Chelsea have always had good players. Yeah, but they've also performed bad seasons. And you say when they, when they came twelfth the year before, and then Conte came and they won the league. I think what really matters is they brought on a, someone like Poch, who obviously I've got a, a lot of affection for. And I feel like if you look at what happened when they, they brought him into Southampton after they took over Nigel Adkins, they stopped shot up the lead straight away. I saw a difference that season when he came over to Spurs. The season before we were horrendous. And that yeah. year, I think the next year we came fifth, but we played good football. We played different football. I don't. I think they'll struggle to get top four. I think gelling all those players together will take a bit of time, but they'll be so much better than they were last yeah. year without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, well, I think we move on from Chelsea and the only other teams really that we have in that are Newcastle and Aston Villa. You're the only one that's mentioned Newcastle for top four. I think it's a valid shout. I just don't think they'll do it again this year. Mm. Villa, you and me both went sixth. I think Unai will progress them again this year and I think yeah. they've made good signs they've had a good transfer window but let's leave those and let's move on to relegation can you all name your three relegation candidates Camersley in last place I've gone for Bournemouth in 19th place I've gone for Luton Town and in 18th I've gone for Everton wow HFC I've gone for in, in no real order I'm just going three relegated teams Luton Sheffield and Wolves Angie? Uh, in, again, no particular order. I'm going 
Forest, Sheffield and Everton. Sheffield United. Ooh, Everton. I've actually, funny enough, Everton. I've yep. got the same exact one as HFC. I've got Wolves, Luton and Sheffield. Okay. I'm worried about yeah. my decision now. So I think everyone's got Sheffield United, which is an interesting one. I think newly promoted Honestly, team. Luton, Bournemouth, Everton. You don't have no. no. Oh, okay. I don't. Why no. don't you think Sheffield United are going? Because I, I think I think teams that come up they get normally have a bit of momentum with them. I think we saw three teams last year. All three all teams, three teams up, so didn't, didn't go down. Um, and I think no, I think that that's the trend we're going to see. Championship teams coming up, really trying to do all the, they're all to stay up, stay in. Um, and I think Sheffield United would be fine. I think they had a really good end of the season last year. They beat us, knocked yeah. us out of the FA Cup. I remember that all too well. But so. then so did, so did Luton. So Luton went on a 14, exactly. 14 game unbeaten run towards the end of the year. And I, I actually haven't picked Luton in my bottom three. I've gone for Palace, Bournemouth, and Sheffield United. Palace, Palace is interesting. I think, yeah. pa- honestly, I, I, I think Palace is an with. interesting yeah, shout. Yeah. They're six to one to go down, which is more than Fulham, um, Bournemouth, Everton, all of that. Like, the newly promoted teams and Palace for me they've lost Zaha they are potentially going to lose Elise because he's got a 35 mil release clause and apparently City and Chelsea are interested mm. and if you look at Palace's team I don't think it's that good it's I look at their midfield and I actually. look at up top if, unless Odison Edward starts popping some goals for them you're backing Jordan Ayew to be their Premier League striker and, and score a lot of goals which he can get some goals but I don't think what you need to stay in the Prem and then their midfield's not particularly good and they've lost potentially if they lose Elise they've lost their most dangerous player and then potentially another one of their most dangerous players if they lose Elise and so for me and, last year, they they and they had a real bad period under Vieira yeah. and Roy Hodgson came in and kind of they, they were lucky that they had such a good start to the year and they were always at like that 12th spot in the Prem yeah. but because but then they went on a really long winning not streak. winning yeah. streak and then Vieira got sacked and Hodgson comes in and he kind of saves it towards the end of the year but for me I just think Palace are good odds to I, go down and I, I see that point but I mean we all have opinions but they still have the most dangerous player they can have and that's a very cheer like, yeah, yeah, they still so have him yeah, they still have him player, man. I, I, no, I agree I agree not... they, so they've lost they've lost Zaha they might lose Olise so that's two but they still have quite a lot of players and I just think it will work somehow I see your point as to why you think they might do but for me there's just so many other weaker it's teams great he's example, sticking around as well no who Gway he as well yeah exactly yeah, still, yeah. They've yeah. still got some good players they're like the only two but I know kind of they, players Zaha's I looked a massive at their team. loss I looked at their, their squad and I was like Eze Gay the rest what? of it not that sure about it's, it. It's testament to the Premier League. I think if you look at our predictions, the years gone by, there wouldn't be so many variations in teams. I think there was about eight or nine different teams that we mentioned for yeah. our top six. And I think it shows that the top, those teams really going for it, the, that pool of teams that can compete is getting wider and wider. And same goes for the bottom of the table. That pool of teams that could go down, you're looking at the bottom, anyone that finishes in the bottom half should be looking behind them next year, not looking ahead. That should be their main concern. True. Um, no, no one's safe. No one's safe. I, I, I totally agree. I think having home as your fortress is going to be a massive thing this season. Sure. I think if you see teams, no matter where they are, they're fighting relegation and they're trying to maybe bat into you for conference spots. They're trying to obviously, if you obviously go for the title, you've got to be good everywhere you go. But generally, over the last couple of seasons, if you've got good home form, you yeah. give yourself well, a could lot be big for chance. And, I think, and actually going from Palace, Palace, <laughs> Palace, t- Palace typically do quite well at home, but yeah. atrocious away. There's a, there's a point there to be made that Luton were equally good away as they were at home. So they were consistent last year in the championship and they conceded the least goals in the championship throughout the whole season. And as the Americans say, defense wins championships yeah. or <laughs> defense avoids relegation. So I, I, I haven't included Luton, which everyone else had. I think the Luton are an interesting one where it's, they should go down. And it's probably crazy for us to say that they're not going to go down. And it is a crazy statement. But for me, I personally think that they're end of the season run last year the way that they play I think is interesting as well they play very yeah. like they, they win the ball back high up the pitch but then it's very direct after that it's almost it's such but, direct but they're not play. in their own half at all and it's, and it's yeah. a bit different to what we, we've seen in the Prem yeah. I think it's almost like a a Burnley but a higher press Burnley it's, a it's, a, more attacking. it's like a it's, yeah it's definitely a more attacking press Burnley I think Colton Morris has a bit of a Mitrovic in him as well yeah. the way that he can hold the ball up he's actually yeah. for a big guy he's got yeah. great as New Star Soccer would say he's got great feet for a big lad <laughs> and he, but he's got that he's a good target man I was there at the final and his, there's the ball retention he just doesn't lose the ball he's so strong 
you, and that really stuck with me. You thought that yeah. this guy's he's definitely got what it takes uh, to be in they, the Prem. They look good. And they love a one nil Luton. Yeah. If you check the if you check the results on a weekend, chances are Luton have won. I, I think they could be the surprise. But let's go Bournemouth Cam. Why have you put Bournemouth in your bottom? I three? think a little bit of they say second season syndrome, I think. I've sent off the, there's just something about having teams with stadiums that can fit ten thousand people that just this doesn't really vibe with me that well. I think <laughs> try um, league is a season of League One then. Hey. Yeah, no, and no, the no, second of Gary Neal. So I just yeah, I think that doesn't help them too. I actually listened to on Talksport with Jim White, their uh, the owner, their new owner, did an interview and he was extremely passionate about it. But I'm not nothing I've seen of their transfer business has really sort of got me out of my seat. I think they sat someone who served them very well last year, and I think that always has maybe a little bit of an impact. And I think if they have a bad start, things could. Snowball. Yeah, did you know that the Luton board, the whole, they're all Luton fans? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's that's, that's cool also a reason that, yeah. why cool I think they that? could stay up. Yeah, Because yeah. I think mean, they've got good ownership. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a small club, but they're going to fight for everything. Oh, in mate, the and in comparison to the money that they've made now, as long as they sort of, if they follow the trajectory that they've been aiming for in the last 10 years, yeah. supposedly the owner came out and said that they're now sorted as a club for the next 25 years plus. Which Agreed. I mean, they're frugal yeah. Club. yeah. Oh, mate. You saw yeah. that. They're frugal club. They didn't spend much to get promoted. No, yeah. no, no. They know what they're doing. Agreed. Well, I think the only other team that we haven't touched on is 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 Everton, which Angie and Cam have both put in. So Angus, why do you think Everton are going down with that new stadium, man? You're saying that they're going to go down with the new stadium that they're meant to be moving in next year yeah on the, um, which uh, would be on the, on the front which we obviously had a look at when yeah. we were up there for it would for, be for pretty disastrous open. if they do that I'd but yeah it was interesting we were up there and freddie was freddie and cameron and myself were there and we spoke to obviously every cab we asked red or blue and what was interesting is you spoke to any blue half of them actually didn't want to talk about football they were actually <laughs> petrified of the start of the season they were genuinely scared i put them in i think they're on borrowed time I think they are never been relegated though. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm saying. I think they're, yeah. on, they're, they're on borrowed time. Last season, I mean, they just, they're not looking good. With the calibre of players that they have uh, that have available, Connor Cody's gone to Leicester, and obviously he wasn't a star player, but like if you're choosing to leave a Premier League, choosing to leave a Premier League club to go to a, a team that's yeah. literally gone, been relegated to Championship, yeah, that raises a question mark as a red flag. I just don't think they've got the calibre to stay up, mate, honestly. No, I, Even though like, Burnley beat them uh, as yeah. a, on paper for me. Burnley beat them. And yeah, for me, that's just one of the reasons. It happened to Villa a few years ago. They were circling. They were coming 16th, 17th, 15th, 17th, having these bad, awful runs. And then they finally went down. And I think if Everton were to go down, they'd go straight back up. But it would just be, it'd be typical wouldn't it? You know, you spend your entire football history of your football club in the top league and the year you decide to open a new stadium. Is, <laughs> is there any accolade? Is there any accolade? Yeah. Is that really, it would it be would wild be, if that happened. Which is amazing. It's something, which is there's something a little bit romantic about yeah. that. Yeah. Off less I'll football. I'll give it that. I actually hope it doesn't happen. I, I, I like it. I really, I, I, as a Spurs fan, your rivals are down the, down the road, your red yeah. rivals, those scumbags. <laughs> I, I have a bit of an affinity to them. I think they are toast. Uh, I can't see it happening. Yeah, I can't. I think I Everton can't. have too many good players to. They're to awful. I think they had a horrific <laughs> season last they, year. Season we will. We also, will. I think Goodison Park's also. It, you look in the relegation scrap towards the end of the season, Goodison Park suddenly became a very hard place to go to. Yeah. The fans are so up for it. It really is, man. The goals that they were scoring when they when they were keeping themselves in it, the limbs were a joke. So. Maybe Agreed. that stuff can play, make an impact. Exactly. Agreed. 